Hello students. In this video, we're going to show you how you can actually discover all of the area formulas by yourself. So, so let's get started. Okay, let's just start with the, oops, let's just start with the area of a rectangle. So let's say you didn't know the formula for that. But what you could do, assuming each of these squares is one centimeter on a side, you could go ahead and count the squares up. You go one, two, three, four, five, six, etc. And eventually you get down to the end and find out that there are 24 squares inside of that. So you could say the area is 24 centimeters squared. Now a shorter way to do that would be to say, well, let's see, I've got six squares in each row and I've got four rows. So another way to do that would be to just say, well, six rows, four in each row, it's just six times four, which gives us the 24 square centimeters. And of course, this dimension on a rectangle is called the length. That dimension is called the width. And that gives you the formula for the area of a rectangle, length times width. So there's our first formula, area of a rectangle, length times width. Now, if you look at the area of a square, well, that's the length, that's the width. So it's the same formula length times width, so we could use the same formula. But a lot of textbooks say, well, because these two sides happen to be the same, let's give them a different name and call that one S for side, that one S for side, and the formula is just side multiplied by side, or side squared. So that's the second formula, but prep uh, personally, I prefer to just use length times width because a square is a rectangle. Okay, let's move on. What about the area of a parallelogram? Well, let's start with a rectangle, which has an area equal to length by width. That's the formula for the area of a rectangle. And it turns out every parallelogram Sorry, every rectangle can be turned into a parallelogram and vice versa. So therefore, the area of the parallelogram is exactly the same as the area of the rectangle. So the formula for the area of any parallelogram is also length times width. Now what about a triangle? Well, this one's a little bit interesting. So there's our triangle there. I'm going to still call this base here the length, and that's the width, just to keep me consistent with the previous uh, shapes that I had. And what I'm going to do here, I actually have two triangles here. Oop, I'm going to use a different tool for that. So there's my second triangle, just there. Oops, I only want to take it to that far. Give me one sec. There we go and drag it up like so. So what I have now is twice the area of a rectangle equals, well, I've got a parallelogram now, so it's length times width. And divide both sides by 2. And there's the formula for the area of any triangle. Length times width divide 2 or if you prefer, one half length times width. And of course, most textbooks and students call this base in height, but I'm going to stick with length and width because effectively it's, a, it's half of a parallelogram. OK, slightly more complicated than that is the area of a trapezium. So if you remember, a trapezium basically has two sides that are parallel two sides that are not parallel, and then h is the dis distance between the parallel sides. So how can we get the formula for this? Well, I've got two different ways of doing it. So here's my first way. Oops. My first way is, once again, oh, no. This is not working. 
Let me try that again, see if I can get this to work. There we go, that's a bit better. We actually have two trapeziums here. So I'm going to spin that one around like so. A little bit further, I think. Oh, that's close enough. Drag it up to there. And once again, I've got two trapeziums. So I can say, well, that's twice the area of one trapezium, so 2A. And what I have here is yet another parallelogram, which is just length times width. In this case, the length is A plus B. So that length is the same as that one. So A plus, A plus B in brackets. And the width is just the letter H for height. And once again, divide both sides by 2. And the formula for the area of a trapezium, I'll put the H in front. A plus B in brackets divided by 2. And that's how you can discover for yourself the area of a trapezium. Okay, it turns out there's another way to think about it, which I actually prefer. So that's the formula that we came up with uh, from the, the last uh, sh uh, screen. Area is H times sum of the two parallel sides divided by 2. Well, if you happen to look at just that, that might be familiar to you. That's like adding two numbers, dividing by two. That's finding the average or the mean of two numbers. So another formula that you could use for the area of a trapezium is just average length times width. So you just average the A and the B, add them together and divide by two and multiply by the width, which in this case is height. And that's the formula that I prefer to think of. It's just length times width once again, but in this case, we have to use the average lengths. Now kites and rhombuses, a rhombus, by the way, is just a kite that ha has a special property that all the sides are the same. And this one's pretty simple as well. So here's the formula for the area of a kite and a rhombus. It's pretty much, have a look at the big uh, rectangle around the outside. That's just length times width. Now, what fraction of that big square is the kite? Where that is half of, or equal to that. So that's half of that. That's half of that. That's half of that. That's half of that. So there's the formula. In fact, I'll prefer to write it as a fraction. So it's just length times width, divide two, or the other way to write it, of course, as I did before, is half length by width. Okay, what's left? Well, that's pretty much it for those shapes. So I basically have one area formula rather than many area formulas. And my area formula is length times width, which works for parallelograms, squares, rectangles, etc. And then for things like triangles and kites, I just call that area is a modifier times length times width. So that pretty much is your area formula for all the shapes we've looked at so far. So you don't need 10 different formulas, which my textbook seems to have. Um, you can get by with just one. Now, what about a circle? Well, I can, in fact, use the same formula for a circle that I just used before, which is area equals modifier times length times width. But finding the modifier is a little bit tricky in this case. So let's see how we go. So what I'm going to do is first off find the area of the square around the outside of the circle. So if that's r, then that length must be 2r, two radiuses or one diameter, and similarly that must be 2r. So the area of the square is just 2r times 2r. Now what about the circle? Well, when I've done this in class, I've asked the students say approximately, approximately, so this is actually only going to be an approximate answer, not an exact answer. 
approximately what fraction of the whole square is inside the circle and by far the most common answer I get is three quarters so the area of the circle is approximately three quarters times 2r times 2r so let's go ahead and simplify this well 2 times 2 is 4 r times r is r squared and of course the 4's cancel out and that leaves us just with the area is approximately 3r squared and that works uh, in practical terms that formula is actually quite good it's only uh, so at the most it's only five percent out from the exact formula area so if you want to quickly um, estimate the area of a circle that's a good formula to use when I ask students what do you think the exact number is instead of a three what do you think the number might actually be and usually some student eventually guesses, he says, I think it might be pi, because pi is 3.14. So let's find out if that is actually correct. So the last page of this uh, uh, lesson is, oops, I'm going to hide that. Didn't mean that to be showing. Here I've got a circle over here. I want to find its area. So what I'm going to do first is say I need to first just recall what the formula for the circumference of a circle is, which is pi times diameter, or in this case, I'm going to use 2 times pi times the radius. So if that's true, could someone, could you figure out what is the distance, the that arc length, half the circumference. So what is the total length of that blue line, which is all of these little arcs added together? And hopefully, it's pretty obvious that that is just going to be half of this. So that total length is pi times the radius. Okay, what, I do, what I'm going to do next, what I would do if I had time to do this, is I would go ahead and then cut out all of these sectors. And in particular, I'm going to cut this sector in half, so I get two smaller sectors. And when I do all of that, here's what I come up with. Oh, by the way, after cutting them out, I'm going to rearrange them. So I put all of the uh, ones that have a, a green uh, area together, all the ones with a white area together. And the shape that I've come up with here looks a lot like a rectangle. So that's just, once again length by width. Now, in this case, the length of that, we've already discovered that, that's just pi r. And the width of the rectangle, well, that's just that distance just there. Oops, what did I do there? How can I say pi r and write 2 pi? Pi times the radius times the radius. And that gives me pi times r squared and that is the formula for the area of a circle now you might say to yourself hold on a sec mr boggs that there is not exactly a straight line that's got little bumps in it and i would say well okay if you want to make it more accurate um, more accurate than that what you could do is cut this into twice as many sectors then you'd have twice as many pieces and your bumps would not be as big you know, if that's not sufficiently accurate, we'll cut this into 20 times as many sectors and line them up just like that, or a million times. And eventually what you're going to get, what you get closer and closer and closer to, is the rectangle. And that means what the area gets closer and closer and closer to is pi r squared. So there you go. That's basically how you can find for your own self how you can actually discover the formulas for the areas of many different shapes. Thanks very much.